video we're going to be learning how to do a chromatography practical. So what you're going to need for this practical is a beaker with some water in it. You're going to need a very sharp pencil and a ruler. Um, you're going to need a splint. On my splint I already have a piece of filter paper which has been cut into a rectangle and a paper. You're also going to need some capillary tubes. These are very very little tubes of glass. They're called capillary because they've got a very very small inside there. It is a tube I promise not just a stick. You're also going to need four dies plus an unknown die. So I've just got die A, B, C, D and then U stands for unknown. The point of chromatography is to separate out different substances depending on whether they're more attracted to the stationary phase, which is the paper, or the mobile phase, which in this case is going to be water. You can remember those terms because stationary means it stays put, so the paper isn't going anywhere. The mobile phase, of course, is the water because it is going to be moving up the paper. Another way you can remember it is because paper is stationary, like you go to a stationary shop to get paper. So stationary phase is the paper, mobile phase is the water. Now I've already drawn on my little slip of filter paper, I've got a pencil line down the bottom, if I can get that to focus. No, I can't. A little bit. In it goes in out. Well, you can kind of see it. So we've got our pencil line there, and I have actually written out underneath A, B, C, D and U, so I know which splodge is which. And I've done um, a splodge each of the inks. Now, how we do those is very, very simple. The capillary tubes are really, really easy to use. Let's say I'm going to do dye A. Make sure, obviously, you don't spill it all over yourself because dyes can stain your clothes. You just pop your capillary tube into the ink for a couple of seconds. Just in out doesn't even have to be a full second. You don't have to put your finger over the top or something, you don't have to suck it up, just pop it in, it will be drawn up through capillary action. Then for the merest, briefest time possible, you just touch it to your filter paper where you want the ink to come out. Very, very quick, and off it comes. This one now, we could reuse it. To clean it, you just Get a different piece of filter paper, obviously, and just dot around, getting all of the ink out of your capillary tube, brush it off the side, and then you've got another clean paper to use. It works pretty well. This is the one I've been using. Look how pretty it is! So we can get rid of um, all of the inks out of our capillary tube, and we can reuse them so we don't have to go through loads and loads and loads of capillary tubes. You can also use pens for this. That works just as well. So, once you have your pencil lined with your inks, you can see how I've attached it. I have folded my piece of paper over the splint and I've popped a paper clip in there to keep it steady. Now, your beaker of water, you'll want the level of the water on the beaker so that when you put in your chromatography paper, the paper just hits the water. I need a couple drops more water in here. That's because I didn't want to go over. So maybe have like a pipette of water on hand so you can prepare a little bit of water. The water does not go up to the level of the inks. The paper should just drop into the water. If you put the inks in the water, they'll just go into the water and the whole practical will be done. It'll be rubbish. Now when you put your paper in the water, you will see on the side here, you can just about start to see it. I've accidentally done that. This paper's gone in the water. Um, and it started to be drawn up the paper. That will happen. That's good. That's what we want. So the inks are going to be moving with the water up our filter paper. You want to stop your chromatography when the level of the water is about up here somewhere. You don't want the water to just... Keep going, keep going, keep going, because otherwise all the inks will just go right to the top. So stop when your water level reaches about that. Now, here's one I did earlier. 
So you can see that's my level of the water. Here are my inks, they've been drawn up the paper. They're slightly different colours, all the different stains. So A clearly's got some yellow in it, B, lots of orange, C, some yellow, and there's a touch of blue at the top there as well. For D, I've got these two distinctive pink splodges, and this was my U, my unknown. So qualitatively, looking at it, I can see that U has got those two pink splodges, so it's probably got D in it. It's got that yellow splodge, so it's either got A or C in for the yellow, and it has got the blue up the top there. So you can just look at it colour-wise and say, OK, it's got the same colours, the spots look kind of the same distance, so that's probably correct. But you can also do it a bit more precisely, a bit more scientifically, and calculate our RF values. For an RF value, you need the distance between the pencil line and the top of your solvent front, and the distance between your pencil line and your spot, the middle of your spot. To do your RF value, it is the spot distance divided by your total distance, and that's it. We then do it for all of ours, we compare our RF values of U to the rest of them, whichever have got the closer RF values, that must be the one that you're looking at. Okay? Now, why they move different distances, it's about being attracted to the paper versus to the water. If your spot is more attracted, or your chemical, sorry, is more attracted to the mobile phase, the water or the solvent, it will move further. If it's more attracted to the stationary phase or the paper, it won't move quite as far. That is how you perform a chromatography. Uh, practical. Thank you very much for watching.